Hey, 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 welcome everybody to the last of the five Great Smoke virtual release parties. I'm here with my co-host, the man himself, the goat. I wondering where you were. There you are. Here I am. Yes. What's what happening? Uh, just getting ready for this last one. From here, we're on the home stretches of the Great Smoke, you know. This uh, this particular virtual event is brought by Remus Bourbon. From Apocryphy to Kingpin, George Remus created one of the most intricate and su successful bootlegging operations during Prohibition. His legend continues today with the family of George Remus Bourbons. Some rules are meant to be broken. Thank you, Remus Bourbon, for sponsoring this segment. Thank you, Remus. This is the last one. This is the it. last one. Yep. This is it. Bye. Which means TGS oh. is right around the corner. It's literally chomping at my heels. I was all happy today. I've been putting in so many hours. Uh, sorry, I didn't hear you. Am I going out? Can you hear me? No, 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 no. That was, that was me. Oh, I said I was so I was sharing with everybody. I was so happy today. I've been so inundated, putting in long hours, getting the the timeline. Uh, it's buried in over there. I got the timeline for the. The digital broadcast done pretty much and all caught I still, up. Wait, wait, wait. I still have the Dead Sea Scroll version somewhere. Oh, yeah. I uh, had paperwork. Yeah. yeah, look at that. How many pages of that? I don't know. At least yeah. one. It's really funny. The highlighted columns are showing your graphic background. Yeah, the green. It won't catch us. <laughs> all the green part. <laughs> But um, yeah, it's like 12 pages of legal. I had warehouse paperwork stocked up on my desk for weeks. I got it all cleaned up. I I had like, I've come to the determination today. Post-its are the devil's work. There's Why? nothing good about it. Because I had like 400 of them scattered all over my desk. Scribbles, notes, jotting down. I mean, I literally just went through every one to make sure I had nothing pertinent written on one and threw it out. I and got um, everything cleaned up, and it was like 5.30. I said, you know what? And, and, you know, Now that we're done with the timeline, we got to start working on the video and the graphics that all are going to get incorporated to the event. So, you know, I got our, our web guy there, and he's ready to churn away and work overtime as he has to. But I said, you know what? It's 5.30. I caught up. I'm going to fuck home. Dude, you I'll were start. fucking out of here, bro. I'll start, I'll, I'll, bag in hand. <laughs> you were I'll gone. Start. I'll start working on that tomorrow. I walk out, got a bag, got my keys, it's 5 30. Alex's like, where the fuck are you going? I'm going to fuck home. He goes, going home. I got all my not. shit done. You didn't literally just say, I'm going home. You I got everything done. I got set up tomorrow. I finally got uh, got a show in no, you're not. All right, I'm not going home. <laughs> you are not going home. So for today's broadcast and event. We have two, not one, two very special guests. Our first, down in the Dominican Republic, he is coming through, um, up and coming. I don't know. I don't like to call him up and coming because his family's been around for years. He's been around years, but I think his notoriety is starting to get more popular. Uh, his uh, brand being the number three half-wheel consensus cigar of the year, uh, I think definitely uh, making waves. Uh, from the Dominican Republic and from ADV Cigars, we have Henderson Ventura. How are you, Abe? Hey, what's up, what's up, buddy? What's up, brother? All good, man. All good. Just uh, super happy, man, to be in the show. Uh, I'm very excited about the TGS, man. Looking well, you're forward. Excited. We're excited. I get more excited in a couple of weeks when it's over. Yes. And and I'm excited also that finally people are going to get to try the what we have coming on board, you know, together. And... I think there's something very special. Uh, we've been working for that project for a while. Um, and this, I just feel like uh, so fascinated tasting this cigar, you know, with, with the age, you know, and and how it came out, man. You Because we had this project in the works for a while. You sent us a bundle very early on. Actually, I think a couple bundles, and then I had to send one over to Ronnie. And... Mm -hmm. um, so we've had time to smoke the cigar more than any of the TGS releases. And we even got to hand some out 
And yeah. we've said it from day one. We we believe this was going to be the sleeper surprise of all the five releases this year. Uh, it's incredible smoke. And um, let's get let's get the counterpart, the, the uh, collaborative side of this, uh, who pretty much put it together with us. Um, let's get on straight from Detroit City, Ronnie Haysha of Secreto Cigar Bar. Turn your phone sideways, Ron. Why do I have to turn my phone sideways? I'm on an iPad. Oh, well, turn your iPad sideways then. No, iPad should be in. I guess an iPad doesn't allow them to do HD uh, size. Because we're all full screen and you're like this. You're yeah, talking you're, if I do that, then it has me on an iPad. It has me. If you use an iPad and I do that, unless you guys can teach me, it has me looking diagonal. Hey, that, hey. You're, okay, hold on. I'm going to tell you why he's looking diagonal. Because if you're looking at the screen, you look diagonal. If you're on an iPad, that's why I hate sometimes when I do an iPad. You got to look all the way on the camera, which is all the yeah, way on the far end. Leave it so like that. Okay. Okay, so tell me where I'm supposed to look now since I have three of the smartest men in the world here. Look the at the smoke, camera. The look top. at the little round oh, camera. Top. It's on one end. It's on one end, the top of the, the bottom, side. right or left. Uh, uh, oh. Other side, other way. Right there. there. Oh, now you're looking, right, right, there. Now you're looking <laughs> right at everybody. <laughs> I can't do that, man. I, I'm dizzy. Come on. No, go. no. <laughs> then don't look. Then don't look at the camera. Turn it back the, turn it no, back I the can't. other way. No, I can't. I, if I do that, I don't. I'm, I don't really know where the camera's at. You don't have to look, just look at the screen. Just look at the screen. Don't look at yourself. I'm now you. I'm cross-eyed. Okay, how about? No, you? you're fine. You're perfect. You're perfect. And I'm looking at you guys, and I'm perfect. I'm not looking at another direction. Yeah, no, you're here. Yeah. Switch him. Switch him and Henderson. That way, it'll look like he's looking at Henderson. He's looking at Henderson. There you go. There you go. Uh, baby, <laughs> how are you, Henderson? I still feel like I'm looking crooked. I can see myself looking like to the left. How could you? We're going to slide it over day. a little bit. Just slide the iPad over. My nose is too big. It's going to leave the screen. I, I knew. I knew one thing that ain't leaving the screen, it's your nose. Did you share this to social yet? I didn't do anything yet. I'll do it right now. Yeah, all right. Okay, so sorry. I trust Henderson. I don't trust you. Henderson knows I'm a Bella Figura. Henderson, tell me, where, where do you want me to see where I'm looking straight? Tell me when I'm looking straight. And I still want to see your faces. Man, you, you need not? to like look look like a, on the bottom border of the of the iPad, right in the center. Okay. He can't do it. Just just stay the way you are. We just right there, right minutes there. teaching you how to look into a camera. You go- uh, see, look, look, Ronnie, Ronnie, look. I'm looking down, right? If I look in the camera, look. Now I'm looking at everybody in the audience, but then I can't see any of you guys. And just deal with it. Yeah, so I guess I'm just gonna look here and pretend you guys aren't there. Can I just be the exception to the rule? I'm gonna be nervous. Come on, about this Ron. I'm, I'm here. You guys can see me. You don't know how silly it looks. Here, let me show you how you look. Okay, I'm gonna see how. No, I got it. I. He can see how he looks. Yeah. Come on. Fucking beautiful. Turn it the other way. Turn it around. For us. Okay. Is this part of the show? Yeah, this yeah, is part, part of the, of the show, show now. Absolutely. Hey guys, this is it's a, it's a right, I'm just going to do Hang on. There You're you go. Good. Leave it. You're good. You're perfect. So much better. Okay. I'm going to listen to you guys. Thank you. So first, before we just get so into everybody anything. Everybody knows this is literally every phone call conversation I have with Ronnie ever. This literally. is an 80-year-old guy. Hey, don't get mad. Like, you have to be paying. So before we get into anywhere, I want to tell Abe, Alex, before I get into Henderson, thank you guys very much for letting me do this with you guys. Of course. Um, Abe and I know that we've got a great funny story how this project spawned. It was fun. Um, but I think that, you know, I, I made a joke about this earlier. Henderson, I don't mean to be a dick, but when you talk the world of cigars, Abe debabna has got like the same amount of years in the business as Drew Estate. He got like, I think more than, what are you, 25 years, Abe? We're both same. 25 years. Yeah. Yes, 25 years in the game. Radio shows, TV shows, The Great Smoke. And then there's Henderson Ventura, the guy that makes Caldwell, La Barba, Room 101, and now he's got a Ventura. I'm just a taco shop in Detroit selling cigars. So for me, this was like a really nice, thing, fun thing to do, but more so because I got to do it with Abe. And Alex, you being the side piece, you as well. Um, should, 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 I, should I drink, Alex? I think we all should. I haven't had a drink in a year and a half, I think. Should we well, get Alex good Alex and I on our second day of a wow. pure Pure juice clay. We were drinking. I mean, pure juices. This is our second yeah. day. We've been pissing like racehorses. I haven't had good. So then I'm going to stick to my water. 
Yeah, I haven't had solid food. I, I mean, if, if you I drink, drink, I ain't joining you anyway. You know. I don't, I don't know if I could. I don't know if I could deal with Ronnie. Sorry. I don't think you should though. You don't empty think I should stomach, drink? empty stomach. Yeah, true. I won't need that much. No, you won't need that much. <laughs> Everybody's like, yeah, yeah drink. drink Dave. Yes. <laughs> Every everyone knows Ronnie already in this show. I I, I think so, right? Yeah, everybody knows Ronnie. Everybody knows Ronnie. I mean, uh, Abe's customers probably don't know me, but I mean, I post in their groups, but you know. You have a good my guys, Our customers don't know you. Like, you like every, every, customers, every, customers, everyone, yeah. everyone should recognize Ronnie By for a, a comment in a post on Facebook that he he make like a very long comment and you don't a get Bible. to understand nothing. No, you have to order <laughs> Henderson. <laughs> You have to order the, the, the decoder ring. After I got the decoder ring, I was able to decipher his post. Right. He would send me texts like that because what he does is he just uses voice to text and he doesn't correct it all. So, however, it exactly. Comes out. That's exactly what Abe knows. 100%. He's the only genius out of all you guys. You think I'm going to type, take my look at how small this phone is. Look at how fat my fingers are. And look at the monster next to you. You think I got time to use these little chiclet buttons? I push the button and I talk. And, and if I'm in a bad mood, it comes out. You don't even work. look. However it comes out, he sends it. A hundred percent. So. What do you, I look at that monster next to you. You think I got. My bad. Who's got the volume on? That nah, was me. So, Ronnie, yeah. I, I, I'm going to mm, try to think if I should bet here. Somebody say bet. But. Do you even remember how we started to communicate? Do you remember how, like, we really met? See, that's how you know who's a true friend. So, let me, I'm going to, this was prior to me coming out to Robert and. Yeah, I wouldn't have invited you if I didn't, we weren't friends by then. Get the fuck out of here. Right. So. My original, did I call you for advice? No, you, you didn't know me. Mm. Did you buy Don Dermo from me? Fuck No, I mean, okay. I did, but that was way after we were friends. I got a bunch of Don Dermo in the cabinet here. I know, I'm trying to think of what's I, I you know, listen, I'm under, I got painkillers in me right now. That's one excuse, I got gummies in me right now. That's excuse number two. And this is actually my first cigar off the plane. So if you in, start with the story one minute of it, I can probably finish it. If not, no, I'm won't. a bad friend. No, you won't. But so anyways, I think Ronnie got wind of me when I joined the JSK Facebook group. Okay, because you were in there. Happy that, birthday, Abe. No, shut up. You still don't know. So that's when he discussed that's when he probably first said Abe and saw some of my posts. So then he found out from somebody that my family, my heritage was from the Middle East. So he calls me on Facebook, calling me a, 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 a closet Arab. Mm. He called me a closet Arab saying, well, why are you trying to hide it? Now, it just so happened because we were friends on Facebook, so he never saw my personal posts. So it just so happened I was in Chicago visiting my family. And my mom had made me like the most traditional Arab dinners. I had posted all my personal page. So I started sending them screenshots on my personal page. I said, bro, you ain't my friend. You don't know <laughs> what I am, what I do. He apologized. That, that's how we actually started communicating directly. Now I know your family, your father spent intimate time with all of them. You know, Abe, I got to be honest with you, man. You know, it's one of those things where I got to the social media party late. Me too. Real, real late because I didn't have uh, a website. And uh, it was funny, man. When I got to Abe's show in Florida, when you were in your studios, I got to the iHeart studio. I was like super, super impressed. Like I saw Dave Garofalo, I know, has a beautiful setup. I think that's the Cigar Authority one, right? Yeah, that's his own setup. Yeah, and that was a great, great setup. But then when I walked into your place, I was like, you know what? This is like a... uh, What's Howard? What's his name? Howard Stern? Like, oh, it's a real studio. It's not a podcast studio. It's 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 iHeart Media, the biggest media conglomerate in the country. So I had said to Matt Booth one day, I said, I'm going to prove to you that I love you more than you love me. 
and he had just been to my shop, like I think a year prior, and we hung out. And I told Abe, do me a favor. And I told Robert Caldwell, do me a favor. Don't tell Matt I'm going to come to the show. And sure as shit, I got there and it was funny and shit. I got to see my boys and we had a great, great time together. And I got a thousand messages after that. You and Abe were great together. It was like watching Laurel and Hardy and Abbott and Costello. And we had uh, bets that we had made with each other. And then it spawned a conversation where we wanted to do a cigar together. Well, that came about well, during COVID. not together. Yeah, well, no, well, yeah. it came about during COVID. But what was funny is after that broadcast, you went to West Palm Beach and Alex caught up with us. Yeah. And Alex like, and I wanted to fight him. I can't see yeah, I, want, I, want, I wanted to fight him. I left because I wanted to fight him, literally. Literally. I don't know, Ron. I left. I'm just curious. Do you remember what, what turned you off so much? You yes. Yes, yes. So we were talking. We were all sitting at the bar. We were talking. And we are talking business. And Ronnie kept making, like, white people cracks and comments. <laughs> but listen, but listen. And I'm sitting there. And he, and he keeps looking at me. Now, in the meantime, fucking Adam is sitting there with us. And I'm like, this motherfucker, he's looking at me? You got Adam sitting here. Oh, that's and back he, in the Adam day. And, yeah, and and... and I literally, I laughed. I said, "This, this guy, one more, and I'm, I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna just go for it. And whatever happens, if I get fired or what, what I'm just, I was just, I left, I left, and I don't know. Somehow, now I love him. That's you know, I that. always, you know, it's funny. There's even on my Instagram page, people take it so wrong. So there was a day I said, and "There's one thing I really want to do in life before I die. I want to learn to do the white man's whistle. You know, the one where they go. Yeah, I can't. Whistle. I yeah, can't see, whistle. I." Yeah, so when you, when you hear me make those references, it, it's never in shade, bro. It's always in a comedic sense. But I wish the, I'm glad we didn't go that direction. <laughs> I, mean, be, I think it, I think it would have been a fun exercise. Uh, it would have been a fun but, exercise. I'm glad we didn't go that direction. So yeah, so, so I don't know how I got to liking him, but now I love him. We're gonna we're gonna give Henderson a chance to talk about the cigar and his company. But how this project started is during COVID, you and I came up with an idea. We were going to do a joint venture. We we're going to work with two manufacturers, come up with a cigar. We we're going to package them together. It was going to be kind of like a secreto versus smoke in. Yep. Cigar <laughs> box. And half the project fell through. Then we got busy in the warehouse. And, blah, 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 blah. and then you know, before we actually got going, Henderson had already produ produced the cigars and made them. And um, it was awesome that we actually got to use him for the great smoke. And I'm going to, you you actually worked with him on this blend. Why don't you guys talk about it? Because you were down there when you guys were working on this. Henderson, do you want me to start that off? And then you can fill in all the, the good parts of the story after. You're not allowed to talk tonight. Uh, so I think hey, uh, that project. Uh, before you guys start, one second. Before you guys start. What time is it? It's 7.20. Oh yeah, we forgot we're selling. We got so live. Yeah, we got so excited with the conversation. We forgot we're selling cigars. The cigar <laughs> sales are live. The cigars are live. That's funny. That's how much you know we're having fun. Now go ahead. Live. So, that's sexy, man. It is sexy. That box is sexy. So I think uh, I, I will tell you the truth. I think it was one of the best cigars that I ever made so far. Yeah, you um, know, very few manufacturers will ever say that about a cigar they made as a project for you know that's not one of their own lines. So that for me to hear you say that is is an amazing testament to the cigar. No, it's one of the best cigars that I I ever made. Uh, and and is is something cool about that cigar? So Ronnie. Uh, Ronnie is he, his palate is those is I will say we have some small difference in terms of how we taste cigar. He don't like exactly the same things that I like. I'm a big fan of the things that he like. I mean, even of my cigar, his February cigar is a of Aventura is the one that I that I smoke less. So he like my dad blending style. And the whole project started with Ronnie is like the only cigar that I have an Aventura brand uh, that was blended by my dad. It was the Navigator, the blue. So um, Ronnie is, it was his favorite cigar from Aventura. 
And he always wants to make that war between me and my dad, like uh, dad versus son. Like, <laughs> who's the best? It sounds like Ronnie. So, so like, uh, he all, always called me cricket, you know, like, uh, you know, the, my dad is a man and, and I need, like, a too, much thing, too much of a thing to learn about tobacco. So I will say, Ronnie, it's not that I have to learn too much things about tobacco. I know I have to learn a lot. Uh, but it's just like uh, you pilot, it's too old, and you're still back in my dad with a base. <laughs> time out, time out. Hold on. So he understands. <laughs> Tell him where your dad came from so that they understand what my palate is. So my dad come from, you know, his... Uh, from uh, from the seventies, uh, uh, before the eighties, a blended cigar. Uh, I mean, my dad was more recognized to be uh, a production manager for Davido Factory back in the days. Uh, that was his school. One of the first cigars that was made for Davido in the Dominican Republic after they left Cuba was uh, one of, one of the blends from my dad. And that was one of the first cigars that they did in the Dominic in the Dominican Republic. And my dad was like the right hand for Sino Davidov in the factory. He was the guy uh, that was traveling, uh, promoting Davidov cigar back in the days when they started the brand. Uh, and he was like doing all the rolling show, all the rolling uh, events with Davidov, all that. Uh, and he, he was in charge of all the production for Davidov. So Tabadon building. Uh, what well, is that corporation of Tabadon? They have three factories. One make like uh, Abo, Griffin, all that, and another one make like a the, like a medium filling, all this stuff, and another one just make Davidov. That this is Sidaf factory. So my dad was in charge of Sidaf. That was the the factory that make all the Davidov. So Ronnie, that was but that was like over around twenty years ago. Uh, my dad spent twenty years working for Davidov. And have been 20 years now out of Davido. So Ronnie like that, that kind of old school, mild to medium, like a very sophisticated and, uh, and complex uh, blending style. Uh, I'm more like bold, uh, rich, uh, and, and deep flavor on the, on the, on the blending style. And, and he feel more identified with my dad job than mine. So at the um, time, at the time. At the time, so uh, this being a war, and and he also, you know, was one of the first guy that supported Aventura since the beginning, and and the United States first guy to have it there, and he always speak very highly, you know, about ape and smoking. Um, I'm not a social media guy. I'm not a guy that is uh, uh, on on the on that side of the in industry very deep like i know everybody i'm being more behind scenes i uh, work at the cigar factory learning about tobacco fields uh blending i've been like a very uh close vision in terms of what i do on, on the cigar business so uh it's been like about three years that i started to explore more in the united states market and you know how to do distribution and how to uh brand a, a cigar and all that so he always speak very highly about Abe. uh he always tell me like you need to meet this guy and finally like uh around two. he used to tell me the same thing about you he, he was telling me about you and your brand for like ever yeah i i think um ronnie also a big fan of the what we make at the factory uh and i will say like uh at least 25% of his humidor is, uh, is covered with product from coming out of my factory from the different brands that we make, like our Ruwa, Walla, Barba, Aventura, uh, and different stuff. And and I think he's a big fan of what you do, man. Uh, and, and this is respect. I think uh, the relationship that we've been building is about respect, you know, respect what other people do and more people that work with a lot of passion and hard work and, and that we appreciate and understand to, to background cigar. And this is everything, how everything come together. Uh, so uh, he, he, he wants to make that project. Uh, Ronnie was one of the top accounts for Aventura when I started uh, the distribution in, um, in the United States. 
we have a plan like at the top account that we have in the states we're gonna make like a private uh a, 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 like a, a, an, an exclusive cigar for that for that account so Ronnie was like the first account since, since the beginning and we always have like a dire spot for you like a, when we're gonna make your cigar so he was like a, yeah I want to take that to the next level he I think Ronnie liked too much the competition. He always wants to make a competition between me and my dad. And and at some point, like, uh, he told me about that idea that you have, like, you want to create a competition between another factory from Nicaragua and, and a factory that Ronnie picked from whatever uh, he thinks. So Ronnie was like, you are my boy, man. Like, unless he do it, picking someone from Nicaragua, I go, like, to the Dominican Republic, and we make, like, a, a Dominican cigar versus a Nicaraguan cigar, for sure. Uh, like, a, this is a very serious uh, project. Let's make it work. And he was putting a lot of pressure on me to get the blend done. We went back and forth a couple of times. Uh, and we w- we went to that fight. Like, a, he, he won that blend from my dad, and... Uh, but he wanted me to twist the blend, so he got like a kind of that joint generation. So we like uh, gonna fight against Ape. So we have to create the best cigar ever. <laughs> and and I was like, a man, trust me. Like a like a, I got you. I got you. He was like, nah, like a, let's improve that. So I was okay, running Like make another blend. So finally, by the end of 2019, like I, I was done. He was like, Henderson, this is the blend. And and I started to produce a cigar, and he put pressure on me, and he was like, uh, uh, that project is not going to happen. So then the, pandem- the pandemic came in, and then, like, uh, uh, my cigar is unmade. It's a very special cigar, and he, in, in stage of via a uh, versus fight between two different factories and two different stores in the United States uh it became a collaboration so um i feel glad about that also because uh man uh, uh that cigar is so good that i don't think that you're gonna win that fight babe no so I, before we go <laughs> before we go forward i may have not but we both would have won <laughs> so i've got a couple key points i want to hit on first and foremost abe's wife likes davidoff so i would say that you know that palette of a Davidoff smoker, albeit an older generation of smoker, I'm 50. So when we were talking about this cigar, I said to you at the, at that time, you finally beat your dad when you came out with King's gold and you finally beat your dad when you came out with a better Connecticut because he had done Dos Fimos with Robert and they did the signature series and your Queens Pearl finally beat that cigar. So I said to you, we need to have a baby. Rather than you go to war with your dad, I need this to be symmetry and balance. I want you to take the best properties of the San Andreas Navigator and take the best properties of the Broadleaf King's Gold, and I want to put them together. And I'm going to say some things right now that Abe is probably going to go, but I said, you know what? I'm going to do what I'm going to do. <laughs> when we did this cigar, I said 6 by 48 was the size that I wanted. I wanted a skinny Toro because I smoked sub-50. And Don Derma was a 6 by 48 And when me and Abe made this bet on who was going to have the better cigar, we both agreed we had to have Saka had to be off the table. And then we'd each pick a factory outside of that. We'll leave the other factory out of this. We took Saka off the table, and we were doing a Dominican versus Nicaraguan. And the funny thing is, is that December 31st, 2019, I was in the Dominican, and I sent Abe a video. And I took the tobacco leaf for the wrapper in my hand, and I started shaking it like it was my schmeckle, and I said, Habibi Abe, and I, I shook the thing. And it was funny because we had the cigar done then, and then the, it was, people are like, we were at, I had a Drew Estate event going, and it was the freestyle event, and I was on the event. I don't know if it was which one it was, and they said, Willie Herrera just came out with a San Andreas wrapper, broadleaf binder, and I called Henderson instantly, and I said, oh my God, our fucking life. We did this December 31st, 2019. Our cigar was done. And now Drew Estates is coming out with a cigar with uh, a rapper that's San Andreas and a Broadly band. I was like, man, we better fuck this cigar up. And then it went cigar consensus number one by half wheel. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, we're going to look like we copied. Our shit was done. So you guys are smoking a cigar that was done. December 31st, 2019 was in the cool room. It was in the aging process. We're now in February 2022 selling you guys these cigars with a rapper that was already four years 
old and a binder that's five years old and then it's been just chilling so when i smoked the cigar i remember calling alex and alex said to me yo bro this shit's fire and alex is it's not that abe and i don't have similar palettes as alex and i when we talk we like to talk quebeco in a different way we talk more often about it, but we were so happy with the way it came out and you know abe i'm gonna just say now before anybody seizes the opportunity to capitalize on this you and I are going to do the father versus son. I'll give you the son. I'll take the father, and that'll be our next release. You get, you get, you get daddy because that's more up your. You get the son, and I'm, I'm going to take the daddy. Yeah, I'm that's right. that. Listen, I just his want to da- say his I mean, dad's specialty is a 48 ring gauge. I'm just telling you now. So it's okay. I'm, going I'm with all right daddy. with that, bro. I, I don't mind being underdog. It's all right. And, and, and the reason why I respect his father so much and Henderson so much is because they don't know other cigar brands, right? So just so you know, every time I see Henderson, I give him a bag full of cigars. And two things I'm going to say about that, and then I'll let you guys go. First thing was I was sitting with his dad. I was at their house, and I pulled out a Don Derma and a Sin Compromiso. And Dominicans have this thing when they like a cigar, they take the cigar and they look at it this way, right? Am I in the camera still? Yeah. They look at the cigar and they stare at it. And I watched Henderson's father and he was looking at the sin comment. He gave me a nod at smoking sin and he gave me the nod at smoking Don Derman. I'm like, hey, you know what? Kudos for him recognizing he has no idea who made the cigar because Henderson smoked plenty of cigars I gave him from cigar brands that are very popular. And he calls it haraka, you know, just weeds, nothing, garbage, toss it. But the one time I said where I said I really respect Henderson Ventura because he didn't know dollar values, he smoked a warped cloud hopper that just got a really good review from uh, Cigar Aficionado. And he said, you know, this cigar is a very good cigar. I just felt like it just didn't finish telling its story. It needed to be a little bit longer. And it was only a seven. But when I told him the price, he said kudos to them. It was a good cigar they did. And then I got a message from the guys over at Warped a couple of weeks ago. They said Henderson was spot on. We made it in the cigar aficionado list. It was Scott Lewis from uh, Warped. And I was like, yep. And he's a big fan of Henderson's work. And he's like, hey, man, he nailed it. We got in. So our palettes have a lot of perils. I just think that Henderson has actually evolved into more bigger body guy. And I'm still in that super silky smooth retro i love and that's what he provided for us here man uh, to me it's a a symphony of espresso and bittersweet cocoa my favorite style of blending and with that i'm gonna say this is my favorite adventura right now and uh it was the best of both worlds old and new i said that did my description this was old school blending with modern materials you know we did as a company you know, here in South Florida, we didn't have a lot of calling for ADV cigars. You know, being on social media, I saw people smoking the presence. And Ronnie, you sent me a bunch to try. Um, it was a good quality product, but you know, there there are two ways that people run their shops, and and, and this is where Ronnie and I are like really completely opposite. Ronnie wants to run his shop like on what he likes, so you know he, he he's more of like I'm going to have brands that I think are awesome cigars where I say it all the time. I sell cigars. Most of the stuff I don't personally smoke, just not my cup of tea. You know, I, I look at it as I, I'm always servicing what the consumers want. So um, bring in lines for us, especially lines that we don't already have a calling for. Consumers aren't breaking down our door. Um, it's always difficult because we just don't have space. No matter how big our humidors are, there's never enough room. So, you know, after Ronnie kept telling me about, Henderson and ADV cigars and semi cigars. Um, and, and actually, I, I, I don't know if this was a setup or not, but you know, Ronnie shipped me a watch for Henderson to pick up at my store, and I had never met Henderson at the time. So I don't know if that was a setup. Hey, that might have been a setup. it probably was a setup. I never said it, but Ronnie's starting to laugh. So. No, the motherfucker broke his watch for the second time. I had to send it out for repair for him. It's a show part. We both, you know, big watch guys. We both have a show part. He got the watch. He fucked it up, put it in the water, and I sent it out for service for him. And then instead of sending it back to Robert's offices, I said, you know what? I'm going to send it to Abe. Go see Abe. And uh, I'm happy. So it wasn't set up. So anyways, that was the first time. Madam. So I said, I'm going to talk to him at the trade show this year. And, and um, the booth that where Henderson was was a um, – compilation of a few other companies 
And we really didn't have nowhere to sit there and talk because I really wanted to get to know him in depth. We really didn't talk too much when he was here about business. And um, once again, Gurkha to the rescue. Right across the, the aisle was the Gurkha booth who had these private offices. And I literally walked over, do you mind if I use your office? And they were great. And we sat in there for about two hours, um, at least an hour and a half, and just talked about cigars, his history, his business, his philosophy, his willingness to believe in the brand. And, um, you know, very confident we bought the line and the line's doing very, very well. Um, not only have I become a big fan of the line, a lot of our patrons love the line. It's been doing very well. So it, it, lining lining up this project to do a Hendrickson TGS limited cigar was was it just it just the moons all worked out. It all lined up and it worked out great. And I think I think everybody out there who's ordered them are gonna be extremely, extremely happy when they when anybody they, uh, order these things yet? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I can tell you this: If it was last year, they'd have been gone already. I mean, I, uh, Ronnie, I, Ronnie, I appreciate you know. All so pretty much, that's half of them are gone already. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, nice. So, uh, Ronnie, I appreciate the introduction to Abe, uh, and Abe, I appreciate also the the support that you give to Aventura so far, and to give me the opportunity to be working together on this collaboration and. Um, I mean, for me, cigar, uh, to have a brand, it just means to me that it's a way for me to share the passion that we have for tobacco and what we believe, uh, what is can be the best and in, in, into a cigar. Um, like I say, I'm a factory guy. I'm a farm guy. Um, I've been working with tobacco since I was 17 years old. And, and the only thing that I know, man, is play around with tobacco, uh, look the best quality into the tobacco. And I think I, I don't know if it's a family thing or what, but I think we believe, we, I, I burned, we have a kind of complex palate, you know, to taste tobacco. And, and I think I can't even taste the water, the difference between water and, 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 and that's allowed me to, to, to work very well on the blending process. So I want to show, you know, that experience as, uh, as a blender or master blender and to be very deep working on the factory in every process and every detail with the tobacco and the, and the factory and to share that with people. You know, I think I'm, I'm, I became a very fan of, uh, the cigar industry when all that movement of the boutique market started to go on. That was like a back 2009, 2010, uh, when all the boutique movement was about to educate the consumers. So make people understand uh, why they should smoke uh, a boutique cigar. What, is, what was the difference between this tobacco and the other tobacco? And, and that's what create more passion for me to be doing this. So we just want people to understand why we use that tobacco and and what make the difference to one thing to another. So, I mean, this cigar that we have right now, uh, Aventura Sociedad Secreta, um, is, uh, I think it's a great combination of, of five different tobacco uh, from five different countries. And, and I use him uh, one of the tobacco that I love to work most uh, uh, and is that the Connecticut brown leaf. And that's what we're using as a binder uh, on that cigar. You know, that sweetness, that deep flavor, uh, that cocoa, uh, and, and the bold body, that the deep flavor that you can taste in your mouth. And and the, with the combination of Dominican tobacco, Nicaraguan tobacco, and the San Andres wrapper that is one of the most beautiful and unique and Maduro uh, tobacco in the world uh, that you can get by natural process, you know, you know, the that cigar dark, brilliantly, brilliantly. Yeah. Effortless. And with the edge and with the edge of the tobacco, with the edge of the cigar is amazing. The aroma, the aroma, when you do the retro hell, uh, the bright flavor in your mouth, you know, that cover all your tongue, uh, and the state, like a nice sweetness and creamy uh, taste on the in your palate, is make that, that cigar very unique. I think it's I one of the most sophisticated blend that I ever made. 
I was literally just going to say to Ronnie, because, you know, I know we're big retro guys. Tell me the retro on this isn't killer. So, you know, it's uh, funny because a lot of my customers were messaging me. I know you're a huge fan of the Don Derma and you love the retro, but that was a cigar that was just given to me based on what I smoke and what Steve knows I like. I didn't have an active input in anything about that cigar. That's all kudos to Steve Saka. This was actually, that's a soft box press and it's a soft press. And this was a round of a toe luck, which I wanted. And I know that, you know, it was one of those things when this was going to be in a competitive thing. I said, man, which direction is Abe going to go this and that. And then when we finally started working on this blend, it was one of those things. I said, the retro has to be the most important thing because of the nose. And I knew Wait, Abe would on. have fun if, with it. If anybody's curious in why they call you the nose, we have documentation as to the fact of why you are called the nose. Oh. <laughs> there it is. Look at that. Be what a beaut. That that's with me and Henderson. In we got pictures. Show them in case anybody's curious how long ago we got shots of you guys down there working on the. That's cigar. December thirty first, two thousand nineteen, right there, man. Them cigars done. <laughs> yeah, so it was one you of those. Actually, things look that, a lot younger, dude. You've aged a lot in a couple of years. Yeah, shit happens, I'm bro. <laughs> 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 That's the best line of the night. Oh, you, you know, you, you know, it's funny, Alex. That when I retroed this cigar, I was so worried I was going to have you know anything of a zing or something. To, I wanted to be a silky retro on the cigar, and the first bundles Henderson kept sending me. As we're testing, obviously it's COVID. I wasn't going back to DR. I was bitching and complaining. And he, the last batch he sent me was a 10 pack and he wrote with a pen on it, Sociedad Secreta. And I was like, damn, this is a winner. And the, the cigar was just, every time I smoked one, I kept saying, wow, wow, wow. And then I actually had to call and dry bag Abe because he sent the bundles to Abe of them. And then Abe sent it to me. And there were some guys I'm gonna shoot out. So Vince Bonatti, the anti-goat, um, Chris Duque, Julian Giancana, guys that I either bought a lot of product from me or I respected their palates. When they messaged me back, super elated. It wasn't until I laughed my ass off when two days ago I said Abe's going to kill us. Henderson went and gave at the show he gave to the guys, or they came to the Dominican, the guys over at Fanatic Cigar, gave him one of the cigars, and he made a Snapchat post saying, this is the best cigar I'm smoking right now. This is the best out there. And I'm like, that's great kudos, but well, you're not supposed to be smoking it yet. <laughs> Had he said, oh, this cigar was just all right, I'd have died. <laughs> the fact that those boys said it was the greatest cigar, I was super fucking happy. And so when other retailers are saying it's great and your customers are saying, is A putting on a limit? I had to call up, A is there a limit? He's first, he's like, no. And then a guy says, I want 20 boxes. And he's like, we're putting a limit at four. Four. That's well, only been a limit. Cigars. You know, here's the funny thing is because Ronnie got involved in this and started talking to people with no clue really how great smoke worked last mm -hmm. year, this year, nothing clueless, just telling people wrong information because he didn't take the time to learn or pay, pay attention to how it worked. It's always been a limit for TGS releases, especially last year after we got crushed. We got crushed last year, even with a limit one, and this year we upped it. We made more, so we increased the limit to two. And then for this one, I believe now it's four. Correct. But four there's round. always four. been a limit in TGS releases, Ronnie. I, I, I always like, listen to me, I always like to make sure as many people who really want the cigar can get it. And if the guys want more and it doesn't all go, you can go back and get more then later. But, you know, we, you know, otherwise a handful of people get them really quickly and then a lot of people miss out. So I'm always about making as many people happy as we can. You know, I, I said today in a post, I, as much as I would love all the Aventura supporters to have grabbed this, I would really love for guys who have never smoked an Aventura to buy a box of these because I think it's going to open up the door for them to really understand and appreciate the quality product that comes out of Aventura. And this was also one of those things where I said I want the guys, you know, that hear me so arrogant and pompous about the cigar. I wanted them to have the opportunity to know why I was so passionate about it. I wanted to pound my chest like a gorilla and say, this is the best. But right now for the level of smoking and all the great products that we have out by so many great companies, I don't know of a cigar that I can say right now, this cigar is significantly better than this cigar, but I can say this cigar is <laughs> heads and shoulders above most cigars that are in market period. 
I mean, it's just such a great, great cigar. Well, I, you know, I love putting out news unexpectedly, especially when people support us. We've got tons of people watching the broadcast live now. So I'm going to break a little news. Henderson, don't say anything because I want to make sure you don't ruin ruin it. So hang, hang tight. But, you know, for you know, we, we've had a connoisseur club for this is our second year now. And we started this project uh, last year where we went out to manufacturers and asked them to blend us something special. We limited the membership of the club only to 500 people. We wanted these to be very small runs. We only make 600 cigars a batch. And then we send them out to people blind. They don't know who made them. They smoke them. And then 30 days later, they can find out who made the cigar. So we, we put it together very fast the first year. And a lot of companies took two or three months. I think three was the most you could do. But, you know, we had time this year, and I didn't have to chase people down the last minute at the trade show I walked through. So this year we really limited, uh, and we have more manufacturers involved this year in our connoisseur club than ever. And I'm proud to say, don't say what months, Henderson, because they don't know. But uh, Henderson is involved in our connoisseur club this year, has blended blended uh, a blend for our club. Um, which will go out sometime this year, and you'll know it after you smoke it, and 30 days later you get the reveal. So it was very cool that he jumped on board to work on that project with us. He's one of the new companies this year. There's a lot of new companies this year. Um, I am also going to say this, which probably some people aren't going to be thrilled about, but it's the truth, and I want to let people know, because in case they want to get on this experience, Ronnie doesn't even know he's going to get pissed. I know he's going to cuss me out. Uh, this is going to be the last year of the Connoisseur Club. We, we have it all slotted out for this year. And it's, yeah, look, I knew you shake your head. No, no. It's a two year run. Um, we, it was an experiment. We want people to smoke cigars in a, in a new experience. It's not like, you know, it's a lot of work from a lot of people, including manufacturers. And it was very cool. And um, this will be the last year. So if you haven't had a chance to get the Connoisseur Club and want to try smoking cigars in a completely different way, really without any knowledge of who made it or what's in it. Um, it's very cool, but uh, December 2022 will be the last month of the Connoisseur Club. I want to tell the consumers something about your clubs and about the way you do business and about the way this project worked out. And I want them to know the differences between your club and other clubs that are in market. I'm not going to discuss brands or companies, but, you know, you see a lot of companies out there get cigars. Robert Caldwell was the one who first did it and did so much out of David. I remember he had one through Oliva. Then he did the a Camacho Liberty series, which is a twenty dollars cigar that was ten bucks in the Lost and Founds, and he really set up the tone doing that. But he was going to the best factories and getting cigars from expensive cigars and selling them at a cheaper price point. And it spawned this new craze where people take a cigar and they put a band on it and they make it look cute and they sell their cigars. Risty from JSK, I was smoking his Red Nights for years. He's done many events at my shop. And I saw a customer give me a cigar from one of these cigar clubs. I cut the cigar, lit it, and I said, this is a JSK Red Knight. This is not whatever food group that they put on this thing. This is a JSK Red Knight. And that was the year Risty left uh, Rojas, and he went to a new factory, and they took those cigars, and they banded them as multiple different cigars to this company, and they kept reselling them. And I knew the cigar because of the pigtail. It was a unique pigtail. And the more companies I see that come out with these cigar clubs and they have these really cute names that they put on cigars, they're buying overruns. They're buying cigars that were not successful in market. They're buying cheap cigars, throwing bands on them and just putting them out to market. And sometimes they have some hits and a bunch of times they have some misses, but they create a folklore behind these things and make them super rare and limited. But the reality of it is the best cigars are ones like we did here, where it wasn't a leftover, a sloppy second, a dog rocket that didn't sell. This has been a project that started out in 2019. We built the project. It's got a real band. Abe was insistent that the packaging on it was next level. The box on it was gorgeous. He was completely, everything we changed on the box design was all Abe. He changed this, changed that. He wanted this people to understand that this wasn't a cigar that we went to Henderson and say, oh, get us that La Barba or that Caldwell or something that you have an over. We picked a cigar Vitola size. We, we just, everything was from scratch. We produced a cigar that honestly, this is what a cigar, when you call it limited, this is what you call a true boutique limited release, something rare. There's 450 boxes. It's only 4,500 cigars. This is what a project is supposed to be like. So for those clubs, if they were doing this style, 
I would understand and respect their philosophies. It's not what they're doing. So for all the guys in the industry and all the customers that are out there, when you guys say, oh, I got this super rare cigar or I'm in love with this, I'm not discounting your palates. I'm just saying from a production side of it, this is something that started from nothing and evolved to exactly where we're at right now, A well, to B with a lot of work. Listen, we've always been that way, and I think anybody legitimates that way. I mean, relabeling sticks has become obviously a thing in our industry now, and it's become very popular. But we are always transparent. Like, I mean, we'll post pictures of blends that we're trying here that are for projects that are coming out over a year later, you know, because we really work on on, on our projects. It's not, you know, just and, – and honestly, Ronnie, I, I've never had the confidence, not just the confidence, because like I said, everybody's palate's different. Like, I've never – I don't know. You said Steve made Dunderma for you. I don't know if he just made it or he sent you. But we've always had, like, three or four different variations um, and, and would choose. And sometimes there's been times where they sent us three blends. I didn't like any of them, you know, and, 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 and we'd go back to the drawing board. Um, but I, I, I think that's why after what, – what do we have now, 17 or 18 micro blends, Alex? You think it's 17? Yeah. I mean, that's why after 17, the reputation of our micro blood series has been strong because we haven't really had, you know, duds. They have been very good, and, and it's been successful for us. And we're going to continue to do it. We got some stuff slotted up this year, next year. I mean, in fact, we've already worked out the TGS releases for next year with some of the manufacturers. So, um, you know, we're excited. But this is a good opportunity for us to get together. We're all, you know, Ronnie is my drive home call. You know, I call my wife the first thing. To let her know I'm leaving work, which is really weird because my dad did that for years. So now it's just in intuitive. Like the first thing I do, I get in the car. I call my wife and say, "Hey, I'm heading home." Um, and then, and then if I've already talked to my dad, then I talk to Ronnie. And then sometimes he'll text me. He'll be like, I'll, "I'll be free in 15 minutes." I'm like, "No, I'll be home by then." Talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Ronnie's like my. So we talk a lot. So to do a project with a good friend and. You know, one of the things I think why we became better friends is I saw Ronnie had the same kind of relationship with his consumer base where they're just not patrons or customers. I mean, most of them have become friends. And I think that's what attracted me to, you know, getting to know Ronnie a lot more because that's what we love. I mean, that's, that's what makes this industry fun and go around. When you see who's showing up to your great smoke this year and some of the customers that are traveling far, um, dear friends of mine, we're super excited to come meet you and come to your event. This will be my first great smoke. Um, right. Last year, I honestly can tell you, and I said it to you a thousand times, in the my tenure in the cigar industry, in decades of selling tobacco, I have never seen anything like the great smoke and a production value like that ever in the cigar industry. I wish people like the TPE and PCA had have thought about this stuff. But for your sake, I'm glad they didn't because the production value on TGS, it was like watching a telethon of cigars. It was so amazing. It was the production value was incredible. I mean, I would have thought I was watching something on cable. It was just amazing. And I said, you know, for take the opportunity to have, be involved in this in any capacity just was just no brainer. I just love to be a part of it, man. Well, and we're, I say we're that with the utmost respect. Thank you, brother. We're, we're glad we're doing it again virtually, but. We're happy to go back live, and I'm excited for guys. There's a lot of – this was the first time in 16 years we limited manufacturers to only one booth. We have a lot of companies, large companies, especially like, like take two booths for two different brands. We had so many new companies that we've been dealing with in, as an organization, especially since we opened up the warehouse, um, that we limited everybody to one. So we got a lot of new people, and this is going to be Henderson's first great smoke. And I love it when, yep. we, have a, I love it when we have a new guy there. I love it because, I mean – for you, it's, it's, it's going to be a whole new experience. Everybody else is excited. They've seen it before, and they're happy to do it. But I can't wait to talk to you afterwards to see what you think about your uh, first great do, do you know? Do you know what's the thing? I don't know what to expect, man. That's the best I just, part. I, I just heard so many great things. And I saw I saw on the internet uh, the, the last uh, TGS that you did, like a virtual. And that, that thing was crazy. I'm... I'm 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 a little bit intimidated about it. No, man. I'll tell you what. You know what's nice, Abe, because especially with the new venue this year, the the manufacturers will be able to be at their booths and still kind of be able to see what's going on. Yeah. Whereas before they were in on another side, and unless they came, they they didn't get to right. see all. The well, it's gonna feel more like 
you know, the way it's always been set up, and by the way, I got the cost of that building for next year. <laughs> if we want to stay there. But I, I don't think they're going to let us, even if we would pay the money, do it there again after. Because the building we're doing is technically supposed to be non-smoking. So um, <laughs> I'm not sure if they'll, they'll let us But they're letting it the slide this year. We'll see what yeah. happens next. Because they moved us last minute. But it, it's going to feel more united because normally it's in two separate buildings with a walkway in between. So the manufacturers are all on one side and the sales are all on one side and the action and the food and the booze and every, everything's on the other side. This is all going to be under one roof. Um, and like I've already reached out to them because we have only one window in February. Um, and that's going to be February 18th next year. And I've reached out to them. She says she'll get me the date, but she's not sure where she'll be able to put me next year. Um, yeah. because the TPE rained on our parade. And I don't want to do that to our manufacturers. And right. the week after that is March. We've never had March and she can't even do the week before the 18th. They're booked. Really? So, yeah. So 18th is like, you know, the only thing. People, people don't realize how far we, we start working on this stuff. It's crazy. Man, since I met you, you've been working on that for this what year. Was that I, 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 I met you like uh, April last year. And, I was working, probably, yeah, and, I was be, and you was working on that already. So yeah. it's been yeah. almost a year. Yeah. So it's I mean, we, like a year production. We literally start, we literally start right after this great smoke. But most of it's conceptions and ideas and and the long-term projects like the manufacturers and getting the cigars we want to make for TGS. And then it just, it's throughout the year. But I'm going to tell you what I'm going to work on like right after this great smoke is swag. Like literally, like in March, we'll be working on the swag. Earlier we have it. Because, we, I mean, just, I, you can't count on anything being delivered. Yeah, listen, once again, people don't realize we started designing the art for next year today. Yep, I, I really love the design uh, of the TGS that you guys did. I cannot imagine like to have that design in, into a swag, like a hat, a nice hat. We like, got him. Uh, you, obviously, got, he hasn't seen him. the package. He hasn't seen the package. Everybody coming to the events got one. I should have one then. We'll give you, we'll give you, <laughs> huh, look at that. We'll give you one when you come down. You know, Abe, I got to tell you, we joke. We joke about this all the time. Henderson knows my father very, very, very well. Spends a lot of time in our shop. He stays at my home when he comes into town. We, he knows exactly how my dad is. And so my Uncle Nobby and my dad are in the shop with me every single day. And when Abe has pictures that they post of everybody's cigar of the month clubs going out, there's a, a zillion post office trucks out there, UPS, which all these boxes stacked up. I'll have like 15, 16 boxes. We're getting ready to check out, check, uh, ship out. And he'll say chicken feed. Look at Abe, Abe, this Abe, that. And so when we're talking on FaceTime with Abe, all I get is trolled nonstop at how shitty of a tobacconist I am in comparison to Abe and how shitty I do everything in comparison to Abe. And it's funny because, you know, both of us being Middle Eastern, our fathers are so different and so much alike in so many ways. What did but- I tell you when you told me that story, Rod? You loved it. But I said, that's that's every Middle Eastern dad. Nothing I ever did was good enough for my dad. That's just how they are. And so when I'm with Abe's dad in Vegas, you know, he's telling me, you know, you're in great shape. And he's petting me. And he's telling me how much he loves me. And then my dad sits there and instead of saying something like, you know, son, you know, that you should aspire to be like that. He tells me he's going to leave working for me and go work for Abe. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and Abe tells him every day, I'm moved. Come to Florida. Come to Get Florida. Get out of the snow. I tell him, come on down. My uncle Nabi wants to come down too. They want to come down to the shop. He smokes cigars with me every single day in the shop here. And he's been looking forward to meeting you. They're going to go down to the hard rock this year. And I told him, you guys go stop down and go see Abe. They're going to go to the hard rock soon, actually, within the next couple of months. So go see Abe and go see Is the production. Is your dad going with him or just your uncle? My uncle and my dad together. Oh, if they don't stop by, I'll be pissed. They will stop by for sure. My uncle will make sure of that. <laughs> Is that the one that ate the Baglala? Didn't believe my wife made it? Yes. And, and and you know what? That's actually, just so you know, Uncle Nabi is the person who introduced me to Sumo Oranges. <laughs> so he's got the palate. Listen, my dad never heard of it. We were in the grocery business growing up. I don't know how this orange has existed for, since 1970-something. And I never heard of it until you told me about it. 
It has a first cousin, I think, called Manelos because you we don't we just got sumos last week and be, week before that we had their very uh, almost identical. Look like Mandarin has a, the cap on the top, and it was almost identical tasting. But that sumo, like this, it's like a bottle of orange juice that you're <laughs> drinking in one orange. I said that to my kids the other day. It's like drinking orange juice. It's amazing. Shout out to Uncle Navi. He's probably not listening, but I love you, brother. Um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm super excited about coming down to the great smoke. I have zero idea what to expect. If it's anything like the, the virtual, it's was just amazing. I can't wait to see this thing live. It's nothing like the virtual. I mean, it's a completely different experience. Even the virtual, even the virtual component this year is not going to be like last year's production. I mean, there'll be little parts that will be, but it's going to be a completely different feel. You got Maddie coming out, Robert coming out, Steve coming out, Henderson. You guys got a freaking, I saw the images. Oh, Uncle Nobby is here. Hey, hey he Uncle Nobby. <laughs> He's going to take credit for inventing the sumo orange now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That, so, like, like, like Ronnie, when you see Ronnie, like, uh, he's acting crazy or he's like that? He's like that. His dad, I still not figured out that if he's acting gangster or oh, he's like that. But all the time, this guy is just like a plain, like, top, man. <laughs> pop. He, every time that he's in there, when are you going to make me my cigar? Well, I'm Pop Swan's his own cigar, Abe, and I'll end up coming through your shop with my luck. The cigar is pops. You, I'm going to tell you this right now. We had these cigars first. And we knew they were going to be ready before anybody else's. You know, I think Matt Booz finally showed up at the warehouse like two days before our virtual event. You know, we knew we had these, but I specifically saved this one for last. Specifically. So this is this is the cigar I wanted to end our virtual series with, our pre-event series. Very proud of this project. Got This is my personal stash that I'll be smoking. Right here. Our, right, we already went through the first box. We did. What's there like one left? Oh, go on. Go on. Huh. There's actually, there's actually there was one left, but I didn't want it rolling around knocking and banging itself. So we're very happy, Henderson. Thank you so much for working with us this year. Um on, on all our projects, whether it's Connoisseur Club or the Great Smoke. We we're, we're so happy we got to get to know you better and work and uh I'm looking forward to future projects with you and your company. Um, we're going to have to work to kick Ronnie's ass if he wants to do that challenge uh, cigar. And uh, Ron, obviously, thank you for being a friend. Thank you for joining us tonight. I know you just got off a plane. You were coming back from a trip. In a wheelchair. I wasn't <laughs> memory. <laughs> hey, hey, I, 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 I'll tell you something. You'd have to say thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ronnie. Uh, uh, and thank you, man. Um, uh, to me, like uh, to be working with you right now uh, in, into all those projects, being inspiration um, to how organized your company is running and and the structure yet that you have there, man. The, I, I have a lot of to learn from you, man. The determination that you have to get things done, you know, the TGS I've been seeing, like how you be working on that, and I think like when you want to make something great, man. This is the only way to go, you know, is to be determined, you know, to have the passion and and and, and the love to do the things on the right way, you know, it is amazing. I feel very proud to be working with you guys, uh, and and I'm in the same way on, in terms of tobacco. I always want to do the things right uh, and in the best way also, and and I feel like uh, we've been working the same frequency. And and I've been looking forward, man, to to keep building my company and to be and to keep growing as person. Also, next to you guys, uh, you guys uh, have a lot of way more experience than me, and 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 I just want to follow you, step, man. Like, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. I will be I will be keeping doing my best. Uh, I'm very excited also of all the. All the thing that we've been doing for Aventura and for Tabacalera, William Ventura, we've been into a, a lot of great projects uh, for the future. I, I always say that we work into, into the future. Whatever oh. we make now, 
whatever we're making right now is like uh, we can see the result like uh, into the next four years. So looking forward, man. To see yeah. our future together, man. I, I know it's going to be great. Future. Like, you know, we, we never count any of our TGS releases as our official, because it's not a fully open release, as an official smoke and micro blend. So that's another project we got on the horizon with you as well. So Before Ryan, we go, guys, I yeah. want to say one thing to Abe. Abe, you know, Anderson and me always talk about shops that it'd be advantageous for him to be with. And I always have to look at something because as much as we're friends, we also sell a lot of the same like products. And you know that I don't carry brands like Perdoma and Rocky. And I always send people a link, you know, go to smokein.com. And when it came to ADV, since I had that cigar, since it spawned, um, I actually, my cell phone number was on their website. People used to call me from all over the world and want to request something because Henderson's partner, Marcel, accidentally put my cell phone number. So my phone would ring at three o'clock in the morning. Hey, I would like to get that Navigator Pyramid. And I'd be like, how did you get my number? And from the website, I was thinking my cell phone number is not on my website. I never knew for like two years. That's and funny. And so the crazy thing was, is that we were talking. I said, listen, Henderson, there's always a choice where you have a, your home shop. I'm in Michigan. You have your competitors here. You don't want the guy next door to you selling the same like product because they don't know how to explain the product. And if they don't know how to teach the product, they'll end up putting it in a discount bin and not know that they've got diamonds and they treat it like coal. And I said to him, Henderson, it'll take a little bit of business for me, but we have so many different, we have so many light customers, but so many different. If I could pick one of the big boys that I would want you to be with, it's Abe, because he's not the guy that goes and blows out stuff, discounts it, shits on Brent. He's the guy that baby stuff. He's the one that nurtured and he makes a person who's new to the game. He can turn you into a star. And Henderson will attest to it. I said to him, Henderson, if you work with Abe and you give him the same passion that you give your cigars and you dedicate your time and focus to making sure that that motherfucker's happy, I promise you this guy will make you a star because there's no one in the business that does it better than Abe. And if you're going to go to one of the big boys and you're going to be one of the big boy shops, I want it to be Abe's. And the funny thing was Abe's customers were buying ADV from me for about six months. And I finally said to Abe, you got to get this guy in your place. I'm telling you. And Henderson was like, he's a big guy. You know, I'm, the production, meeting your demands is obviously your volume is much bigger than dealing with the small boutique shops that he had dealt with in the past. And he said, I'm going to make it a focus. And I'm so happy I got you two guys together because it's not competitiveness in this. I want Henderson to grow and I want him at the, he's 30 nothing years old. And, you know, we got the guys that we respect in the industry are in their 50s have been doing this forever. He's there with them right, right now. He's equal to them. I wanted everybody to know that, and I thought the best venue for it to be told, this is the baddest motherfucker coming out of the DR right now, would be Abe DeBab to tell him that. And by carrying it in his shops. And with that, I'm going to say, Abe, thank you for giving my boy this shot, because I want people to know how badass he is. Well, thank you for letting me use uh, our one, project one, for a TGS release. I appreciate it. One last, one last thing. This project is not about money. This project for me is about the pride, you know, to be working with Abe and, and, and Ronnie at the same time. And I just want to give the best so so uh, they can appreciate what we do here. So it's kind of this blend that we put together. We using the greatest tobacco that we can get. Uh, we aged the tobacco for a long time. Those are very expensive cigars to build. That's a very expensive cigar to make. We're not making money in this project. We just want crazy. people. We just want the people from TGS and for people that support smoking and Secreto to get to try the best cigar into a collaboration. And that was the whole goal into that cigar. And, and, and as somebody who's much younger than me, I will tell you this. I built my career literally not worrying about making money. Mm. Now, don't get me wrong. You have to make money. That's why we work. But that's never been the focal point because like you, and I've always said, because look at us now, we're 16 years. The first two great smokes, we lost money. I think we broke even year three because it was important for me to throw the best experience possible, no matter what cost. So everybody went home and told 20 of their friends and hopefully five more would come back next year. You know, so it's that attitude and mentality where you're going to find your best success. And the money will always come. 
It always does. And you know what, Abe? Thank you. You, 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 Abe made this all possible for you guys in one respect because we looked at Henderson had a Queen's Pearl and King's Gold and his navigator and a Corona said it was 6x44s. This was a 6x48 skinny Toro. This cigar's price point, if he kept it in line with Henderson's other project, would have been a $13, $14, $15 cigar. Everybody took a loss here to make sure and, and say a loss, loss of profit because we wanted to make sure we had the best cigar. And when you see collaborations, it's, well, this guy's got to make a little extra money because his name's on it. This guy's got to make a little extra money because his name's on it. We did the opposite. We all took an L. Abe said lower. I had to agree to his lower. He was the boss <laughs> man on this one. And then Henderson had to take lower. And then we end up with a cigar that's this price. And we're like, dude, this was a $15 smoke. How did we get to here? Because we wanted to have everybody experience this at this price. We wanted to make it affordable for everybody. Abe did. And at the end of the day, I hope we sold at least half of that's them a true, today. That's a true story. We argued about it. Yeah, that's so it, it, yeah. it is what it is. Uh, Alex, how are we doing, man? I don't need a number, but we selling good? We're selling very good. Very good. Yay, great. Very good. So listen, this has come to the end of our virtual series. And Henderson, also, congratulations. I mean, Henderson, just so people know, Henderson's not like I'm an in-your-face social media I bet you somebody had to tell him. It's probably Ronnie when he got number three consensus cigar of the year. I had to. I called him, Marcel, and Nicole, and they thought they were on some regular list. They I'm didn't like, even know. I'm telling you. No, I. I had to explain what a consensus was. I said, I'm telling you. The whole every blogger and every person came up and said, "You are number three consensus in the world," and he's like, "Really?" I said, "Yeah, really." <laughs> in in my personal opinion. That's probably the strongest list to be on because it's a consensus. Because it's a cumulative people. list, absolutely. And it's math is strong, but that's the type of guy Henderson is. He doesn't. He probably didn't even heard the consensus until this year because that's not what he's working at. He's focusing on his tobacco, his cigars, his work, his pride, and the rest comes, and that's how it works. Well, that's like, uh, Alex, my man, once again, producing another great show for us. Behind love the, you guys. Behind Thank you seat. for having us on. And big thanks to our good friends over at Remus Bourbon. George Remus, the king of bootleggers. Check it out. They uh, bought this episode to you. And before they're all gone, if you get a chance, Sociedad Secreta, grab them. I'm going to say this is probably the sex second sexiest box. This Matt had a sexy box. Rub it on your face. But this, on your face. No, no, no. It's not as soft, but it does have this. You're not as drunk. Cool. I'm not as drunk, too. But it does have a very cool finish to it. So I would say second, second sexiest box. I'm sorry, but... This one's still the first sexiest box. I said the same <laughs> thing. That that was the sexiest box, but I got the baddest motherfucker. But look, it's cigar in the lineup. like husband and wife, like they're married. Look, two sexy boxes. We're, yes, we're I the said that sober. Alex is laughing over there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody. Good night. Hopefully, we'll see you all on February 26th, whether it's live or through the web. But until then, everybody, keep it lit. Thank you. The nose.